And joining us with more live now is Jonathan Moran, the Daily Telegraph's chief entertainment editor. Jonathan, really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. I mean, looking at that package then, what a woman she was, what a performer. I understand you interviewed Tina Turner just last year. What was that like? How did she strike you? Look, Ash, um, she's a remarkable woman and I feel very emotional about it. And to be honest, I actually had never met her face to face. We did an email interview because she basically was a recluse for the last several years since she retired. So she lived in Switzerland with her partner and didn't do much publicly. Uh, I think the last event would have been her stepping out in New York and London for the openings of the stage musical based on her life. And her life, I mean, it made for such an amazing story, didn't it, in terms of the highs and lows. Her life was far from easy. She had real struggles, but obviously managed to rise above them and sell, what, more than 100 million albums. She was an extraordinary woman, one of the greatest artists of all time. If you look back and you go onto Google and you see her performing with Beyonce at the Grammys in 2008, she contributed so much. If you look at all the young pop stars coming through the world today, from Beyonce to whomever, she influenced them because she was a strong female role model in a world that was run by men. And she fought for the underdog. She's extraordinary, it's a devastating loss and her music will live on for many, many, many decades to come. And she influenced a lot of Australian artists as well. The more we hear about her today, the more obvious it is that Australia was a special place for Tina Turner and Australians really had a special connection with her. I think a lot of Australians don't understand why she has such a strong connection here, but the connection is when she, when her career was down and out, when Ike and her had split and she was basically struggling to make a dime playing gigs in Las Vegas, it was an Australian by the name of Roger Davies, who's one of the greatest music managers of all time. He'd previously worked with Olivia Newton-John. He took her on board and he took her from being this down and out, washed up, so you could say, and I don't mean that with any disrespect, but no one would touch her because of the Ike situation, and he made her the biggest, the global superstar that she is. He didn't do it alone, he did it with Tina, side by side. Uh, and the stage musicals playing out in Australia just opened last week. This time last week, I was getting ready to go to the opening night of the Tina Turner musical with a young Australian woman by the name Ruva Nagenway, who is performing as her. And, uh, yeah, there's a long Aussie connection. The NRL campaign that she did in the 1980s for the Winfield Cup with Wayne Pearce and E.T., Andrew Eddingshausen, Alan Langer. These, she is so entrenched in our culture here. Nutbush City Limits, the dance that we do at all the weddings and all the parties that we go to still today. I think, I think the young kids do. We all do it, right? That is only in Australia <laughs> because her connection here in Australia is so great. We loved her. It was like she was an honorary Australian and her connection here was greater than anywhere else in the world, you could argue, or certainly a very much stronger connection. You know, artists come to Australia and they talk about how much they love it and they want to buy a home here and all of that sort of stuff. Well, Tina put her money where her mouth is. She was the face of the NRL. She was in Mad Max with uh, Mel Gibson and George Miller directed. She spent a lot of time here and that was because of Roger Davies, who my heart goes out to because he would be broken today. She, he's a wonderful man and worked with her hand in glove. Yeah, we're all feeling it today here in Australia, but those tributes are really pouring in from right around the world. I mean, superstars, Mick Jagger, Diana Ross, Michelle and Barack Obama, there is really this outpouring of love that we're seeing today. Across the board, you don't have to be a superstar musician to have appreciated her stuff. My colleague just spoke to Phil Jamison from Grinspoon, who had never met Tina Turner but said she was greatly inspiring to him as an artist. I think all artists across the board will be feeling it today, but also just all of us that whose lives she touched. Many of us never met her, but we lived through her music. My late mother and I shared a love for Tina Turner and I've been listening to that music for the last week everywhere I drive in the car and so this morning getting the train into the to the office here at, at the Telegraph I was listening to her music on the train. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to take in and, and 83 at my age doesn't feel as old as, as, as what it did when I was 20 so it um, it feels somehow that it's too soon. I felt like she'd live on forever. Yeah, it was a remarkable life. Jonathan Moran, really appreciate you joining us with your reflections. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ash.